Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Which is peace on Yahweh's holy Sabbath day. Welcome to another holy convocation that Yahweh has enjoined to us uh, here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Um, there were uh, uh, several things that um, uh, we have to uh, uh, go over in being a part of this word um, because uh, uh, the heathen has a, a tendency to uh, uh, lump all things that uh, they believe or like together. Although the heathen themselves do not want to be uh, uh, compared one uh, uh, to another uh, because they may encounter a group of Hebrew Israelites that say that they don't believe that uh, 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 in the um, uh, birth of Yahshua, they didn't believe that all Hebrews do not believe in the, the birth of Yahshua because you have uh, uh, some Hebrews that don't believe in baptism. They believe that all Hebrews do not believe in baptism. Um, yet, when things happen amongst Christianity, they don't um, believe that uh, 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 they have to lump themselves together. If one Christian does something, they don't feel the need that they have to explain that there's a difference between that Christian and them. Um, so when, when something happens among one Christian organization, uh, they don't come out and apologize uh, uh, for it. Uh, but they put you in a position whereby you are, are, are forced to do uh, uh, certain things. It's, it's uh, pretty interesting. Whenever an uh, 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 Islamic person does some kind of bombing, they go to all these uh, uh, well-to-do or high-up Islamic places and ask them to condemn um, the act. Yet, when a Christian does something, they don't show up at Christian churches and say, you need to condemn this act. You need to officially speak out against this act. And uh, uh, it's one of those things, uh, 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 right, wrong, or indifferent, that we have to deal with for the time being. So there's some things that we are going to have to understand uh, when it comes to certain principles uh, uh, of the Hebrew Israelite faith that you're going to have to answer for. I'm not saying it's, it's right, but you need to be prepared. Uh, brother, would you read the oracles? And entreat the angel that stands at the door to come in and sup with us and us with him that we may make this a holy convocation by the angel's presence. First Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim gives, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua the Messiah, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through chapter 5 and verse 4. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiven one another, even as Elohim for Yahshua's sake has forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim as their children and walk in love as the Messiah also have loved us and has given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather given of thanks. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. Keep your foot when you go to the house of Elohim, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with your mouth, and let not your heart be hasty to utter anything before Elohim. For Elohim is in heaven, and you upon earth. Therefore let your words be few. 
Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 and 21. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Revelations chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. All right. It is written in Isaiah 7, verse 14, that a child shall be born of a virgin and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is interpreted Elohim with us. This is written and none can refute it. Yet many argue and vehemently deny that there can be such a thing as an immaculate conception. When we are born naturally, we, are, uh, uh, we all were inside a sack of fluids before being pushed out of the birth canal and then breathing air. So natural birth came by way of water and blood. So doesn't it make sense that the second birth would be brought through water as well? Yet many also deny water baptism in the same breath that they deny uh, the way in which the Messiah came to this earth. Uh, let's begin today's sermon in Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to read that from verses 18 through verse 25. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18 through 25. And today's sermon is entitled, The Immaculate Conception and Water Baptism. The Immaculate Conception and Water Baptism. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18 through 25. Now the birth of Yahshua the Mashiach was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Yosef. Espoused mean they are betrothed. He is set to marry her. Uh, uh, they would call it an engagement today. Go ahead. Before they came together. This is the key part. Before they came together. Now, you have to learn how, I, and, and, and I was told early on, um, be careful how you hear what you hear. People will read the very verses that deny what they're saying, but they will read it in a way that you miss the parts that actually prove that they are incorrect. Because right when it gets to certain parts, they'll either start shouting, dancing, screaming, or breathing real hard. And then you start noticing that, and you take your focus off of what's here. The part here, it says before they came together. Now, there's large groups of Hebrews that will tell you that this didn't happen. Go ahead. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. She was found with child before they came together. Now, many will tell you that, 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 that they just throw this part out because they limit Yahweh and, and what things that they can believe. So when they get to this part, they just say that that's not what it means. They, 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 it says that, but they said that's, that's not what it means. Now, they don't offer what it, what it means. They said that uh, 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 no other man has come to, to earth in any other way, so this must be the way. So, uh, 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 Yosef had to have been with uh, 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 Miriam, no matter what the Bible says. Go ahead. I mean, if that's the case, we might as well refute the, the birth of Adam as well. Because no and other we man was... And we're going to get there. Verse 19. Then Yosef, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privately. Now, there are two things going on, uh, on here. Then Yosef, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. Now, you find two things here. He was minded to put her away privately. Now, if he came to her and he was with her, why would he even think about putting her away? See, there's certain things that just don't make... You got to use your common sense. Now, common sense ain't that common. I, I call it rare sense. You need to use some of your rare sense. Okay? It don't make no sense that he would put her away if he himself had lain with her and be a just man. 
See, you, 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 you can't be a just man and then lay with her and then act like you ain't. I don't know what. How'd you get pregnant? Who, who, who the baby daddy? I don't know. You know, if he was there. So him being a just man, he wants to deal with this in a certain way. Hold your place right there and let's go to Deuteronomy. Chapter 22. So there, there are two ways in here. It says being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. Number one is public example. Number two is put her away privily. So let's get some understanding on these two parts here. Deuteronomy 22. And let's read verses 13 through 29. Verse 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her, and give occasions of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Okay, so if he understand the thought process of this brother, before they came together, she was found with child. So this is explaining this situation. I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. A maid is a virgin. She is with child. This is the only thing that he knows of at this point. If she is with child, then she is laying with somebody. If he makes her a public example, understand what happens to her. Go ahead. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. The tokens of the damsel's virginity proves that she was a virgin before he came uh, uh, with her. They do not have any tokens of her virginity because nothing has happened. But yet, she is with child. So, if he makes a public example uh, uh, out of her, she will be stoned to death. She will be killed. Go ahead. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. And lo, he has given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not your daughter a maid. And that's just by saying, I found her with child. This is exactly what he would be saying. I found her not a virgin. Go ahead. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Right. So the, 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 the parents don't have this. They would have absolutely no evidence to help their daughter in this case. Go ahead. And the, the elders of the city shall take that man and chastise him. And they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver and give them on to the father of the damsel, because he has brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, right, there, there is no evidence for her. Okay, go ahead. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die because she has wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shall you put evil away from among you. So when you can't prove, doesn't matter if it happened a certain way, where is the proof? There is no way for her to prove this. If he does this publicly, she will be killed. Now, most people will operate out of anger. She won't get pregnant. I'm make sure she get killed. Stone. Have you ever? They got some stuff on 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 the internet, and it is some of the most horrific stuff I've ever seen of a stoning. It ain't nothing pretty. Now, him being a just man, he feels like he has been done wrong, but he's still not willing to let her be stoned to death. See, a just man is not seeking his own vengeance, even when he thinks he's right. Go ahead. Verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, when they, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shall you put away evil from Israel. Mm-hmm. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then they shall bring them both out onto the gate of that city, 
and you shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife. So you shall put away evil from among you. So when somebody claims that they were a uh, 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 force, when a woman says that she was uh, 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 raped, and they said that this happened in the city, well, well why didn't nobody hear you holler? We, we, we live in the city. We're not in the country. See, they, they, they have a set law for certain things. It's amazing how when women claim that they were raped and they were with these uh, basketball stars or bo even Mike Tyson, they at his hotel room 3 o'clock in the morning. What you over there for? And if you got raped, how did nobody hear you scream? See, the, the word already has some things for that. Say, you in the city. There's too many. In the city, people live close together. How is it nobody heard you? Go ahead. Verse 25. But if a man be found, but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. She automatically gets the benefit of the doubt because it was not in the city. So they say even if she would have screamed, we would not have heard her. So only the man should die in that situation. If it's in the city, the man and the woman are supposed to be stoned. So understand how just yourself was in saying, I'm going to put her away privily and not make a public example. Even though he believes he's right, he knows that she will be killed if he publicly says this. Go ahead. But on to the damsel, you shall do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man ri riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. All right. Jump to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24. And let's read verses 1 through 2. Now, remember now in the beginning, it says, If a man married a woman and he uh, 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 um, give occasions of speech, he had found this uncleanness in her. He found her not to be a maid. He found her not to be a virgin. This was the, the, the situation with Yosef before they came together. Okay? Uh, Deuteronomy 24 and verse 1 and 2. When a man has taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her, uh -huh. then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Now, the second way that this could be done is just sending her away. He has not made any uh, 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 public statement, although it will be known that he has given her a bill of divorce. She is not stoned. Understand, if he did that publicly, not only would she would uh, be killed, the child Christ would have been killed as well. So you have to understand why Yahweh chooses certain people. Had he just chose one of them angry brothers, Christ was, he was done deal. Because the angry brother wouldn't even waited around to find out, oh, so the Holy Spirit had something to do with that? All I know is she was pregnant, I want her to die. That the anger brother ain't waiting long enough to find out. See, it says the spirit worketh patience. A lot of people not waiting. They don't have any patience to see what the spirit is doing. Now let's go back to uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 19. I tell you what. No, let's go to uh, uh, John chapter 8. Matthew, I mean, uh, John chapter 8, and let's read verses 1 through 11, and we'll see how Yahshua dealt with a situation where the woman did commit adul adultery. Understand, uh, 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 Miriam, Mary, has not committed any adultery, but she can't prove that she didn't. This woman did. Go ahead. Verse 1, Yohanan chapter 8 and verse 1. Yahshua went out onto the Mount of Olives, 
And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came on to him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought on to him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now, we already know that they're hypocrites because the only way that she could be taken in the very act of adultery is that they seen the man uh, who she committed adultery with and he should be on trial as well. That was what we just read. But So you see the hypocrisy already going on. They're ready to bring judgment to the woman, but not so willing to bring that same judgment to a man. See, this is why Yahweh took judgment out of Israel's hand. Because we funny with it. Remember Judah did the same thing? He did not deliver uh, his son unto Tamar. But as soon as she become pregnant, he's saying, oh, she need to be burnt with fire. Come to figure out he the one that laid with her. Right. Go ahead. Verse 5. Now Moshe in the, in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what saith you? Mm-hmm. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to, to have to accuse him. But Yahshua stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now, how that normally goes, the witnesses who witness against a person is the first to throw the stone. Yahshua put it on another level. He that is without sin, you throw stone number one. Then we, we'll start behind you. Go ahead. I'll wait. I'll wait. Sinless man, throw first. Go ahead. Verse 9. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, mm -hmm. went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even on to the last. And Yahshua was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Yahshua had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those your accusers? Mm -hmm. Had no man condemned you? She said, No man, Adonai. And Yahshua said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Right. Now, they don't see the, the connection. Yosef was going to deal with his mother privately. He dealt with the woman privately. Did she get chastised for what she did? Yes, but she didn't get stoned to death. Now let's go back to Matthew chapter 1. So, at verse 19, we read, Then Yosef, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. So, we now understand both parts of this. Public example, she's stoned. Privately, she's just sent away. Go ahead, verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold. Now, you, you see the, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You see, so I don't know, y'all might have missed that. Y'all said, he thought about it. Why he thought on things? See, most of us, we just act. I, no, she didn't. We already got a bag stone. What you doing, bro? I'm picking up rocks. <laughs> bro, have you, have you meditated on that? I'm meditating on how I'm going to throw that rock. I'm going to skip it. I'm gonna, you ever seen me throw it on the water and the water and just go, cut, cut, cut. Yeah, that's, I'm, that's how I'm going to throw the rock at her. Hey, hey, have you thought about it? Have you meditated? Now, while he's thinking... Patience, it gives the spirit an opportunity to deal with what you got in here. Do you give the spirit any time to work with you? Or you just automatically do? You just do. You just do. You just do. You just react. Something happened, I'm going to deal with it. Have you thought about it? Have you meditated on it? Have the spirit had an opportunity to deal with your heart before you do something? Go ahead. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Adonai appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Yosef, you son of Dawid, fear not to take unto you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, there are some Hebrews that can tell you, they will tell you that this is not possible. This cannot happen. So they have this in the book, but they don't believe in the book. 
Go ahead. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yahshua. Right. Now, we know the heathen are very keen in changing uh, our names, uh, uh, what it says, and you shall call his name Yahshua. Remember what was written in Isaiah 7 and verse 14, you shall call his name Emmanuel, which interpreted is uh, Elohim with us. Yahshua means Yah. He is extolled by his name Yah. Shua means salvation, God, salvation. That is the same definition. All Hebrew names have a definition. Greek names do not necessarily have a defini uh, definition. This is to glorify their pagan god Zeus, i.e. Zeus. The very first Bible printed in English in 1611 did not have a J in it. It said I-U-S-U-S-E-A Zeus. The principal Greek god of the pagans is Zeus. Go ahead. For he shall save his people from their sins. You see the definition of the name fits the name. See, that's something that we're not accustomed to. Names have definitions. And this, the name fits what he is prophesied to do. Every time one of these brothers came in contact with uh, a Holy Spirit or an angel and their life changed direction, their name was changed to meet the direction. Abram don't mean the same thing as Abraham. Sarai don't mean the same thing as Sarah. There's a different path at the point of spiritual enlightenment. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Adonai by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is Elohim with us. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Now, this means these brothers just throw this entire part out. Because, and this is something that you have to be careful about. There, there are bits and pieces that people cannot wrap their carnal minds around, so they have to make another reason for this or they got to throw it out there, there, there are certain parts uh, uh, of this book that people just cannot believe uh, uh, when you talk about the ground opening up and eating somebody people say, oh man I, I, I just I, I just can't believe no ground can open up then we hear about the the sinkholes just opening up and eating the whole house in Florida they had a video of uh, Louisiana where the trees just keep getting sucked down into, they're showing the trees disappear. The tree just going down into the water. The sinkhole just keep opening up. They had a, 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 a Corvette a, a museum. Just one day, the ground opened up, and about 15 to 20 Corvettes fell down into the hole. Nobody even knew that it was. All of this happened up underground. There's water that moves under the ground. And sometimes it just washes dirt away, and... What happened if you were just standing there that day? <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 24. Then Yosef, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Adonai had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not. He what? He knew her not. I'm sorry, say it again. He knew her not. Okay, he didn't know. Now, do we have to just, uh, uh, explain the biblical definition of no? <laughs> explain the biblical definition of no he knew her not what's the problem man but we got hebrews that saying no this 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 is not possible he knew her not till now you got them people that want to make mary a perpetual virgin that she's just a virgin for her entire life that's not so he knew her not till see that birth had to be holy but after that, hey, this is his wife. They have all the kids after this. Go ahead. And he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Yahshua. All right, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 13. You see this uh, 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 um, Catholic doctrine um, um, that kind of jumps in and out of certain uh, denominations of Christianity. Because, I mean, you know, bottom line is if you're a Christian, you're a Catholic. 
and and people don't understand what that is uh uh the denominations of christianity are are basically uh uh people who protested that's why they're called the protestants they protested against catholicism they protested against the catholic church but when you get right down to the various organizations they just have various schisms the baptists have this one argument the methodists have this one argument but the rest of the stuff they keep it was the catholics that set up all of uh, 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 the pagan holidays, the Christmas, the Easter, the Valentine's Day, and told all of those people that this is part of Christianity. All the other religions, all the other denominations do all of those very same things. They just might have one thing that they did not like from Catholicism, but they kept all the rest. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, and let's read verses 53 through 58. Verse 53, and it came to pass that when Yahshua had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country and taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Right. So they got a problem with him because he know the stuff that he knows and uh, 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 they want to uh, uh, be able to put a finger on how did he get it? See, when you have too much information, I mean, you went to college or something, you got a doctorate, you got a PhD. See, people like to, you, you can lie more when, if you got a PhD. Because people automatically believe you. Go ahead. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? Now listen, go ahead. And his brethren. His brethren. Jacob and Yosef and Simeon and Yehudas. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Right. So these are other children. That, so the whole perpetual virgin thing uh, 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 is not proven within this uh, 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 book. Go ahead. Whence then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Yahshua said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Mm -hmm. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Now, a brother used this to say uh, uh, that because there were other children that Christ was born just like everybody else. But the things that we read before said otherwise. Now, we believe that Yahweh can raise the dead, heal the sick, open up the ground, swallow man whole, turn a stick into a snake, then back into a stick, part the sea, dry a brook, make barren women give birth in old age, etc., etc. But don't believe that he can make man without the act of sex. Genesis chapter 2. And what was the first thing that Yahshua said uh, 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 when he entered into his country? He couldn't do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Consider that. So now you have Hebrews that are teaching there can't possibly be a a a uh, a, a thing of an immaculate conception, they have unbelief. Now, if it's the one way Yahweh and Yahshua can be limited, it is through unbelief. Genesis chapter 2, and I'll read on verse 7. And Yahweh Elohim for a man out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, as you were stating earlier. Now, was there some kind of sexual act between Yahweh and the dirt? <laughs> How did he bring forth this man? Okay, what, what happened in the dirt there? Up, so now he getting dirty with the dirt. Now he get, but see, your carnal mind here has locked you into, this is all you understand, and it's got to be the way that you understand it. Yahweh ain't limited to what you understand. Who are you? Since when? Does the creator of something becomes limited by what he created? Whoop. Where did they do that at? Go to uh, verse 21. I mean, they 
do strange things now. People have kids, and then the kids tell them what to do. That's not what happened in 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 in, in when I was growing up. See, now kids get to tell their mamas and daddies what they want to eat. I don't want to eat that. I, I do like this when they do it. I'm like, you ain't hear it. <laughs> I wish I would. I don't want to eat that. So you you whatever on that table when dinner time come. That's what you want to eat. Now, you want to eat it, you wake up tomorrow. I guarantee you, you're going to eat whatever on that table tomorrow because you're going to be so hungry from the night before. Whatever comes for breakfast, you eating all of it. Right. That'll teach you not to run your mouth about what you want and what you don't want. They'll take care of that. See? These, these folk ain't about that. They ain't about that life. They ain't about that parenting life. Because if they were real, let them be hungry tonight. Tomorrow, He'll be much better. I promise. Uh, verse 21 through uh, 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 25. And Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Mm -hmm. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Now, how is this possible? He could, this is surgery. Go ahead. And the rib, which Yahweh Elohim had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her onto the man. And Adam said... This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So, the woman was taken out of man and afterward, every man now proceeds out of a woman. Now, was there any sexual act that took place here? Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and we're not ashamed. All right. Uh, uh, let's go to our first Corinthians chapter 15. So this this was the setup of, 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 of the birth of Adam and uh, 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 or first man. And we did not see any act of a sexual nature. Understand this is a this. What, what people don't understand about the Mashiach is he was a specially crafted box to hold the spirit. Spirit just can't dwell and stay with flesh. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 39 through 47. Verse 39, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star different from another star in glory. This is how Yahweh has set things up. And you don't get to just uh, uh, throw things the way that you want them to be for your own liking and understanding. Go ahead. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. First man, Adam. The last man, the, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Wait, 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 wait. So he just likened Yahshua to Adam. Wait a minute. Adam didn't come through the act of sex. So there's the first Adam and then there's the last Adam. Now, why did he liken him unto Adam? Hmm. Read, man. Howbeit that was not first which was is spiritual, uh -huh. but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Adonai from heaven. The second Adam is the Adonai from heaven. It automatically showed you the first Adam was not uh, brought forth through natural uh, means. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 7. 
I'm sorry, y'all, but we're going to do a, 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 a lot of turning today. Because you need to be prepared when you run into these uh, 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 these people. Because they, they stand pretty bold. Ain't, 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 ain't nothing like a, 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 a person that stands just bold and, 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 and I mean, they stand strong in their life. I mean, they, they lie with a straight face. And if you ain't ready, they'll give you low self-esteem. Because they believe they lie so good. That's how some people get you to believe they lie. They believe they lie so much, they make you believe. Well, maybe it is true. Because they look like they believe that lie. Now you, now you want to believe a lie. It ain't so. Luke chapter 7 and uh, verse 22 through 30. Then Yahshua answering said unto them, Go your way and tell your Hanan what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Mm -hmm. And when the messengers of Yohanan were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning Yohanan. What went out you what went out you on into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went out you for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went you out for to see? A prophet? Yes, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. Mm -hmm. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, which shall prepare your way before you. Right. So, Yohanan was set to come before uh, uh, the Mashiach because understanding that this baptism and all of these things must be done, uh, but there had to be set a man to prepare the way for the Mashiach. But he wasn't going to be the Mashiach. Understand, he was just slightly older. Go ahead. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than Yohanan the Baptist. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, this is this, this in red, so uh, this is Yahshua talking. So, according to some brother's doctrine, Yahshua was born the same way through the act of sex that every other person was. Then that would make him better than the Mashiach. The Mashiach says, uh, uh, of those that are born of women, the Mashiach came from a woman, but not through the normal means. See? So, what he's saying, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than Johannan the Baptist. Did he put Johannan above him? No. Because he wasn't born the same way as everybody else. See, line upon line, precept upon precept, you can disprove all of these things. Go ahead. But he that is least in the kingdom of Elohim is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified Elohim, being baptized with the baptized of, Elo of Yohanan. Mm -hmm. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of Elohim against themselves, being not baptized of him. Right, right. Uh, they reject him not being baptized of him. So they rejected Yohanan. Uh, because they already had pomp and circumstance. And they rejected the Mashiach as well, not being baptized in him. Do understand that these same groups that are teaching that there is no immaculate conception also teach that there's no water baptism. And the word doesn't agree with any of that. Matter of fact, uh, uh, um, I heard one brother end up saying that uh, 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 before you were born here, you resided in heaven and you came forth to this earth. Let me tell y'all what that is. That's black Mormonism. The Mormons teach that you was all spirit beings and uh, the people who didn't do what they were supposed to do in heaven, they had to come to earth black. That's how they say you, you was cursed black. Okay, now. The Mormons, Joseph Smith, came from New York. Those Hebrews that teach those things, they all came from New York. People think Joseph Smith, no, he came from New York and moved to the Midwest. So that Mormonism doctrine didn't start from the Midwest. It started in New York 
and yeah. move to the Midwest. These people have the same doctrine. They're just black Mormons. The Mormons believe that black people were cursed black. When you get into these, uh, 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 some of these Hebrew groups, they believe that the only people that's going to get their salvation are black people and white people not. So they both, twi they just twisted brothers. One of them teach black lies, the other one teach white lies. It's the same thing. This ain't no matter what lie you, you, you tell. It's still a lie. Go ahead. Did you finish that? Yes. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, and let's read verses 13 through 17. Verse 13. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto Johanan to be baptized of him. All right. So among those born of women, he was uh, the best. He's the only one qualified to baptize Yahshua. Go ahead. But Johanan forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of you and cometh you to me. Right. So Johanan automatically said, I ain't, I'm not worthy to baptize you. Go ahead. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. It becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So if Yohanan had a baptism, then the Mashiach uh, 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 is now changing this baptism. He is getting baptized. And if the Mashiach, Christ, is our example, why would we not be getting baptized? How do we allow someone to tell us that there's no such thing as baptism? Uh, uh, when we see what's happening here. Go ahead. Then he suffered him. And Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Okay, all right. Now, why is this important? Because there are groups that's going to teach you, so you baptize with the word. See, see, when you read the word, the word baptizes you with knowledge. If you look deep enough into a lie, you can make yourself believe it. You know, that's how they teach agents. To pass lie detector tests, right? You know, CIA agents, they can pass lie detector tests. You hook them up to a lie detector test and they look at you, yeah, y'all, huh? Sky's purple. Yes, sir. All they do is learn how to control their breathing when they lie. They just lie with a straight face. And they're able to go to these places, people hook them up to a lie detector test, they can lie through their teeth. I mean, tell 50 lies straight and get right off of that and say they passed the lie detector test. So people actually think the lie detector test means something. That just means that the person got nervous. And then they say, okay, that must have been a lie. They got nervous right there. So when you get a real good liar, a real pathological liar, lie detector test don't, don't do nothing for them. They can be caught with the bloody knife in their hand. I did not murder him. And as long as he control his breathing, he's going to pass the lie detector test. It means nothing. Go ahead. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Uh huh. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, consider what happened. This is straightway out the water. So, this tells you that it was a water baptism. He wasn't baptized with no word, he wasn't baptized by, you know, some. Northeasterly wind came and brought something. He was baptized in water. Now, this is a rebirth. He went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Now, as that spirit descended and rested upon him, then you hear the voice. Now, consider verse 17 and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That did not happen until baptism. See, this is another entity. This is not the body that was there all of those years. This is a different entity. This is why the word says he that came down from heaven. Because that spirit that came out of heaven, lightning on him, that was the son of Elohim. Not the body that was born of the woman. The body that was born of the woman was made so that it could hold that spirit. 
uh, let's go to uh, uh, Genesis chapter one, so we can understand that. Because there's a whole lot of people that 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 really don't understand what's going on. Genesis chapter one, and let's read verse twenty-six. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to need you to read that again. Let us make man in let our, who? our image. Let who? us. 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 That's more than one. See, El is singular. Elohim is plural. Let us make man in our image. Not let me make man in my. He didn't say let me make man in my image. Let us make man in our image. Go ahead. And let him and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. All right. Now let's go to Luke chapter three. So now we see that it says, let us, because you have a whole lot of people that are, that, 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 that are teaching um, and this is that uh, Sunday morning doctrine that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is is all one. Now they agree in one; they walk on one accord. So, in a spiritual sense, they are one, just like a Father and a Son are one. But they're still two different entities. See, understand at the baptism you had the Spirit descending. Once that Spirit rested upon him, you then heard. Another entity that said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. If it was him, he said, this is me in which I'm well pleasing myself. That's not what he said. Luke chapter 3, and let's read verses 21 through 23. <clears throat> now, when all the people were baptized... It came to pass that Yahshua also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. Now, it is amazing that we can keep reading about this water baptism, yet we have groups. We're talking about groups who have congregations spread all across the country, some out of the country, and none of them are baptized. Now, this is the door to the kingdom, the baptism. If you got baptized in the name of Jesus, it was just practice. Because the Messiah named Yahshua. According to what's written in here, it says there's none other name under heaven by which men shall be saved. So ain't no, ain't, ain't no salvation in that other name. See, that's why the, 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 the people are slick. They ain't got to change all this book. What they got to change all the book? All they do is just change the major characters. We can read names in here and they all ethnic. Once you get to the major characters, all of a sudden the name changed Greek. You don't find that peculiar. Why do you think they went through so much uh, 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 to beat Kunta Kente to tell him, y'all, your name Toby? Why? So they can take his culture. See, you take the name first. The culture going to follow. Go ahead. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, you are my beloved son. And you, I am well pleased. Uh-huh. And Yahshua himself began to be about 30 years of age. Being as was supposed, as was supposed, the son of Yosef, as was supposed, the son of Yosef. So naturally, they're looking at him as the son of Yosef. But understand something in, 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 in verse 23. And Yahshua himself began to be about 30 years of age. Now, most of y'all should understand why. When we read in the law, a man had to be 30 years old to work in the temple. His temple was his own body, and he still had to be 30 years old before he worked in it. See, people don't even understand that he's fulfilling biblical law as he's doing these things. Most women will tell you that most men don't grow up till they hit 30. Before that, they play a whole bunch of games. I can find it in the book. Y'all might not like it. Because I know y'all looking at a bunch of 25-year-old boys, and you say, oh, he's so fine. Right, 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 right. According to this book. He's 30 years old to work in the temple. He had to be 30 years old to work in his own temple. 
Go ahead. That was it. That was it right there? All right. Let's go to uh, 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 let's go to Exodus chapter 4. I'm sorry, y'all, but we got to get through this. We're going to have to jump a few, few more places. And y'all need to keep keep your notes in, in, in case, you know, you, 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 you run up on one of them street corner Kung Fu Hebrew Israelites, you know, and they got their karate suit on and, you know, and they ready to battle script. Oh, they love that battle script, bro. They just like to just get there. Jeremiah 14, brother. Hey, 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 man. Hey, chill out with the battle script, brother. Chill out. Oh, they ready. They ready. They just walk around with a, with a Bible in their hand and their fists all balled up. Boy, they ready, boy. Got fringes hanging from the ears. It's just everywhere, boy. They, they swear them, them fringes just make them holy. Man, it says fringes should be in the quarters of your garment. Man, it's supposed to be uh, 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 in the corners of your garment. They got fringes all the way around the bottom. They, 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 they swear that that's the way that this is supposed to be done. And I don't tell people that they don't, uh, 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 not to wear fringes. It says you wear the fringe to remind you to keep the law. But at the end of the day, the spirit of the law should be written in your heart. So what happens if you leave the house and you forget your friends? Can you see in there? Because you, you, you ain't got your friends. What happens if you got on a friend shirt and you get an accident and your friend shirt get ripped up? <gasps> My righteousness is tore. What must I do now? Because I don't have my fringes. Is it okay to sleep around now because your fringe is gone? Right. Right. Exodus chapter 4, and let's read verse 22. And you shall say unto Pharaoh, Uh huh. Thus said Yahweh. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Wait a minute. So when Yahweh is talking, telling Pharaoh to let go Israel, he didn't refer to Israel as a nation. He referred to Israel as his firstborn son. Remember, let us make man. We were not called Yahwehites. We were called Israelites. See, that there, there's some things that we're not really dealing with. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. See, he didn't even give us the name Yahweh right away. We didn't even know that name. So we got Kings, 1 Chronicles, then 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and read verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If my people who are called by my name, we will not call Yahweh eyes. Understand, Yahweh sent his only begotten son to become the door in which to enter into the kingdom. Well, Yahshua said constantly, I didn't come to do the, 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 my, my will, but the will of the Father that sent me. So the Father gave us El and then El Shaddai. He did not give us Yahweh until we were getting ready to come out of Egypt. They had already been set up as, as the children of Israel by that time. So then we have to understand what this name is. Remember, it was the angel that gave Jacob this name. Go ahead. And turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. All right, let's go to our, our Exodus chapter six. Go ahead, bro. You know, bro, it, we were discussing in the beginning where it says, "Let us make man," and here. Do, 
we just read where he says, if my people who are called by my name, mm -hmm. you know, Ephesians chapter three and verse nine actually clarifies all of that mystery. Cause in, in verse nine, it says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in Elohim, who created all things by Yahshua, mm -hmm. Mashiach. Right. Uh, consider, it says, let us make man. Why do you think Israel had to come and dwell in that body and be crucified for the creation? It was his creation. Remember the us, let us make man? Right. You made him. You got to go down there and die for him. Good idea, son. Yeah, go do that. Good idea. Yeah, let's make man in our image. That is a really good idea. Uh-oh. They done done something wrong. Guess what, son? What did? Yeah, go take care of it. Then he keep, as it kept coming to the point where he was having to give up his life, he prayed. Remember the time he was praying back to back to back? Please, if it's possible, take this from me. Hey, 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 hey. See what happened when you won't make little, little images of yourself? <laughs> same, same thing. Y'all ready to be parents? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm having a kid. Right, right, right. And then they go up and tap something. What happened? Them folk come. Miss Johnson, this your boy? God. <sighs> yeah, what do you do? Yeah, guess what? So, at a certain point, yeah, you got to accept that. But then it come a point where, hey, boy, you got to accept responsibility for what you've done. So, he asked his father, hey, does this have to be done? He asked uh, uh, several times in prayer, and he realized that that must be done. So, all right. The, 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 the hand that betrays me is on its way. I got to do this. It says in the beginning, the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. Let us. So Yahshua was there in the beginning. But not in the sense of this physical man, Yahshua. That spirit that dwelt in the body of Yahshua. That is Israel. We are named after Yahweh's son, Israel. This is why we are called Israelites, not Yahwehites. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, mm -hmm. unto Esau, mm -hmm. and unto Jacob by the name of El Almighty. Right. El Shaddai. This is all they knew. Remember, it was Moshe that said, who shall I tell them uh, 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 have sent me? Hey, tell them I am have sent you. Tell them I am that I am have sent you. Go ahead. But well, by my name, Yahweh, was I not known to them. Right. They didn't know that. So when you start looking at the names of these uh, 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 books, you see... Uh, 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 even even the, 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 the names of the, the, the prophets, you see uh, uh, Yoel, Ezekiel, all of these things end in El, right? Just like Israel. Then, at a certain point, you start seeing the names end in Yah. Yeremiah, Hezekiah. They didn't have the name Yah before, so they couldn't have named themselves after Yah because they didn't know Yah. So the names change from L ending. Remember, all the names have definitions. So every last one of those names means something. Daniel, uh, 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 Elohim shall judge. L. So it ends in L. That's God every time. So remember, L is singular. Elohim is plural. But then after a certain point, you get Yah, Yah, Yah. All of these things are happening more and more and more. They didn't really have the understanding of that before. So now you see a whole lot of those names changing after that point. Uh, let's go to Johan in chapter 4. John chapter 4. And do understand something. I'm not giving you this so that you can um, 
convince uh, one of those Kung Fu Hebrews about what they believe in. This is for the people that stand by who are getting slayed because they have no understanding. Don't think you're going to change the mind of Bruce Leroy and his bunch of Kung Fu bandits. They're not changing what they believe in. Okay? So don't get it twisted. They're not changing nothing. But there are innocent bystanders who are standing there. And because nobody offers any objection, they believe what they hear because they haven't been given any other choice. When you go to these little poor villages and they're drinking out of the same lake that the goats pee in, you think they want to drink that goat pee water? But they don't have any choice. But I tell you what, show up up in there with some crystal springs, see what happens. You think they're still going to drink that goat pee water? Yeah, excuse me, my brother, but what is that? <laughs> oh, this crystal spring, but can I have some of that, my brother? Yeah! It's your job to offer the good water. You don't sit there and let them drink the goat pee water and you got clean water. So this ain't for them brothers. They not going to change. But you got good, clean water. Offer it to those people that stand by and stop letting them be poisoned with that twisted doctrine. Johanna in chapter 4, and let's read verses 1 through 18. When therefore the Adonai knew how the Pharisees had heard that Yahshua made and baptized more disciples than Yohanan. Yohanan? Wait a minute. When therefore the Adonai knew how the Pharisees had heard that Yahshua made and baptized more disciples than Yohanan. Yet he have these people teaching that there's no water baptism. Go ahead. Though Yahshua himself baptized not, but his disciples. Now, remember what I told you? Be careful how you hear what you hear. I have heard people read this very scripture, this very line here, and say that, you see, see, Christ didn't baptize. And they took this totally out of context. He's the high priest. The under priests are the disciples. They're doing the baptism for him but they're still getting a baptism set by Yahshua. See, you got to be careful with these people, with, with the, 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 the slick oration. I mean, they give really good speeches. I mean, they're able to woo people. And they take this word and completely twist it and give you a total different understanding by how they twist it. Understand, this is what Yahshua had to deal with uh, 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 right after baptism. Then you have the adversary waiting to withstand him. Understand, the adversary knew the word. So he started telling him he was taking the word, but taking it out of context. Didn't it? Uh, why don't you take this stone and make it bread? So now he's trying to, 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 to make him use the word out of context. Yahshua takes the word and put it back in context. It is written, man shall not live by uh, 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 bread alone, but every word uh, uh, that proceeds from the mouth of Elohim. So what he wanted him to do, hey, you hungry? Let me see if I can test you with this hunger and this bread. So let me, let me tempt you to do a miracle, and then let me see if you're going to go ahead and, 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 and eat once you do it. To go ahead and put food in front of a person who fasted. That's some, that's some dirty stuff right there. Oh, you fasted? Look at this bread. Look at this lamb. Isn't it? This is delicious. And you know the brother fasting. Why are you turn around and bring the brothers some lamb and sit it in front of his face? See, Yahweh speaks against this. He said, hey, y'all offer the Nazarites wine. You know this man on a vow. If he on a Nazarite vow, he not drinking any wine. Why you turn around and offer Nazarite wine? You trying to make him break his vow. Go ahead. Johanna chapter 4 and verse 3. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Yosef. Now Jacob's well was there. Yahshua therefore, being wearied with his journey, 
sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahshua saith unto her, Give me to drink. Now, um, you, you, you need to stay. Uh, uh, this is why most of the times you have to read enough to get a, a, a full subject. In the beginning, don't forget what the very first thing was. When therefore the Adonai knew how the Pharisees had heard that Yahshua made and baptized more disciples than Yohanan. This is starting off dealing with baptism. Go ahead. For his disciples were gone away onto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you, being a Yehudi, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Yehudis have no dealings with the Samaritans. All right, the Samaritans are still our, our Israelites. You have Israel was split into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. This uh, was the prophetic uh, uh, things of uh, the two sisters, Leah and Rachel. See, people read the things about Leah and Rachel and think that it's just a bunch of fighting among some multiple marriage family. Yahweh was setting forth the prophecies of what would happen with the children of Israel. And they began to be two different nations as Leah and Rachel was constantly back and forth at each other. They two, at this point, they mentioning the Samaritans, uh, 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 people of Samaria, like they not even Israel. That's how divided we ended up. Go ahead. Verse 10. Yahshua answered and said unto her, If you knew the gift of Elohim, and who it is that saith to you, Give me to drink, you would have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. He would have given you living water, not this regular water you seek for. Go ahead. The woman saith unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then have you that living water? How you going to get living water at a well and you ain't got nothing to get the water out? Go ahead. Are you greater than our father Yaakov? Now, this lets you know that she's of the uh, children of Israel. Are you greater than our father Yaakov? Yaakov was the father of the 12 sons of Israel. But now that they have become split nation, now they're not dealing with one another. These were the things that Leah and Rachel and all their wrestlings were about. Yahweh was showing what was going to happen to the children of Israel. Go ahead. Which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Yahshua said and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Right. This water ain't going to help you. It's another water uh, 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 that's going to help you. You drink this water, you're going to be thirsty. But the water that I have for you, you ain't going to never get thirsty again. Go ahead. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. He ain't talking about drinking water. He's talking about baptism. Remember what the subject was when the whole thing started. Go ahead. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Yahshua saith unto her, Go call your husband and come hither. Now he going on a whole nother level. Because the husband has the right to disannul a vow, but he's making a point here. Go call your husband and come hither. Go ahead. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yahshua said unto her, You have well said I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. In that said it you truly. Right. Now, see, there's a whole lot of people that have a serious problem with Yahshua. A lot of people tell me, oh, we love the Lord. Oh, we love, oh, the Lord. Yes, do you know the Lord? Love the Lord. Right. And when he said, go call your husband, is he going to be talking about that dude that's standing next to you or the dude that was standing next to you before that dude or the dude who was standing before you before that dude? He said, you've had five husbands. He wasn't counting marriage certificates. He was counting that thing that we don't want to count. See? So we don't understand that all covenants are sealed in blood. We don't understand what this act of sex is. It is a covenant. He said, you have five husbands. And the one you have now, check this out. And he whom you now have is not your husband. So she wasn't confused in how he was counting. Because at first she said, I don't have no husband. You well said that what you said. For you've had five husbands, and the one you have now. So, I mean, she got a boyfriend. 
She got a little man friend. So you like, yeah, you got a husband now. See, your little man friend. The one you do the unholy mattress money with. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's your hub. But he ain't your real hub. Go ahead. That was it. Uh, um, it says, uh, uh, go uh, uh, keep reading. The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. I perceive you are a prophet because he has given her everything that she's done. Now, that then sits on her so heavy, she goes and tells other people, hey, y'all need to come talk to this guy. Because he a prophet. Because he told me whatsoever things that I did. You know she ain't told nobody that. Ain't nobody known that. She said, if he knew that, he is a prophet. But this right here shows you the power of that baptism. See, this, this is one of those things. All of these covenants. He said, uh, 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 verse 17, the woman said, I have no husband. Yahshua said unto her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. Go back to the very first things that we read in Deuteronomy. Once that man uh, lays with that virgin, that is her husband. So she had the first husband, which was the man she lay with. Then she was with other men. That's why the one that she's with now is not her husband. That's the power of this baptism and being born again. You got old covenants out there that you done made that you didn't understand before you got any kind of understanding of this word. That's all them little covenants you done made. You might want to wash that off. Let's go to Johan in chapter 10. But understand that you got whole groups that have congregations spread all across and none of these people have been baptized. Yet they out trying to teach the word and they got all these miscellaneous covenants laying all over the place. Miscellaneous husbands and wives laying all over the place. Because we were raised up in, in the ways of Babylon. Well, that's just normal. It's, it's okay. That's not what's written in this book. See, we, we think that the word changes because the time changed. Y'all, we don't care nothing about no time. When I like when people say, well, you know, during the biblical days, I'm sorry, when did biblical days end? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't see the expiration on here. Right. Johanna in chapter 10, and let's read verses 1 through 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Okay. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, uh, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Go ahead. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he, is, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Right. So when we read this book, uh, uh, it is the voice of Yahweh and Yahshua that you should hear. Not my voice. You should be able to hear the words. See, it doesn't matter whose natural voice reads the word. You should be able to recognize the voice of Yahweh. So when somebody gives you a strange doctrine that don't fit this book, the real sheep flee from that. See, they'll be around for a little while and they'll be sitting in the congregation and say, what? That don't sound right. Right. That's your spiritual ear saying, get out of there, fool. <laughs> <laughs> Grab your stuff and leave now. Where your Bible at? Get out now. Stop dropping roll. Get. But no, we start negotiating. With it. Well, maybe, because see, people stay in Congress, well, these are my friends, and this is my family. Right. I've listened to televangelists have congregations with 10,000 members say some of the most off-the-wall stuff and watch the people just sit there. Say, wow, he know he has control of these sheep, that he can say anything. And they have absolute... They have no spiritual ear whatsoever. They can't discern that that is nowhere 
in the word whatsoever. That's why in certain places there's more talking than reading. You can't differentiate between what what part is the word and what part is that person just talking. So that's why that's why we do a lot of read. So y'all can't go somewhere and say, well, you know, Esau ben Israel said, no, 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 no. You're going to put that on Yahweh. No, you, I'm going to make you tell the whole lie. Don't tell part of the lie. No, 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 no. You're going to tell the whole lie. See? So when you have a problem, you're going to have that problem with Yahweh. You're not going to have it with me. See, I'm the person you see, so it's easy to have a problem with me. I don't like that brother. Right? No, no, no. Who you really don't like is Yahweh and Yahshua. That's who you don't like. It's not me you don't like. See? Remember, they didn't like the prophets. Because the prophets didn't come and say the things that they say on, on Sunday morning. You're going to be rich. You're going to be, God wants you to be prosperous. You're going to live a life of abundance. <laughs> That's not what the prophet said. The prophet said, you better stop that before Yahweh do something to you. They be like, we're going to kill you, that brother. We're going to kill that brother. Have the prophets got thrown in jail? Why? Because they were speaking the truth of what Yahweh told them to say. So they didn't have 10,000 member congregations. The truth has a tendency to thin out your friendship a little bit. See, when you tell a lie, everybody want to hang with you. Keep telling the truth. See how, how your friendship get thin. See, people just tell little light lies. If people ask you, they got on the little crazy looking outfit. Does this look nice? <laughs> now, you got the truth on one side. Then you got the nice friend on this side, and then some of y'all, I'm going to be a nice friend. No, oh, it looks fine. You're going to keep a lot of friends. Keep on telling them kind of lies. See? But start telling the truth. You look like how to do this with that outfit on. I ain't gonna be Now, the friend got two choices. Either they're going to stop being your friend, or they're going to go take out that how to do the outfit. One or the other. Now, and if they want to look like how to do this, then they're just going to stop being your friend. And you're going to have to live with that. That's a spiritual sacrifice of telling the truth. So what you going to do? You going to tell a lie so you have more friends? That what you going to do? Well, you ain't got to worry about being in the kingdom then. Go ahead. Johanna chapter 10 and verse 6. This, par this parable spake Yahshua unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Yahshua unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Mm -hmm. I am the door. I am the door. So all of these people, we see that Yahshua baptized uh, 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 through his disciples. We see that Yahshua was baptized. So now you have people who have congregations, but they themselves were never baptized. How can a man who cannot swim save you from drowning? He ain't been baptized. How he gonna help you? Go ahead. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And people have turned that into a financial thing. Not abundance in the word, abundance in natural things. See, this is that part when it says, uh, 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 you are poor, but you are rich. There are people that have sought after this knowledge, that want to understand the things that you understand, and they don't have it. You are rich in that. Never mind what your bank account look like. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, mm -hmm. whose own the sheep or not, Seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Right. That's what happened when these brothers are out with this twisted doctrine. See, they're scattering the sheep with that strange doctrine. Go ahead. The hireling fleeth because he's an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. And am known of mine. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. Mark 16, and we're going to read verses 9 through 16. 
Verse 9. Now when Yeshua was risen early the first day of the week, that Sunday, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Right. Now you have these strange people that say, well, see, since he rose on the first day of the week, and they broke bread on the first day of the week, that has changed the Sabbath to the first day of the week. They'll do anything to uphold the lie uh, 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 that was fed unto us. Yet, you go into the Apocrypha and start reading the first and second Maccabees, and you will see that the Gentiles were against the Sabbath from day one. And we're talking before Christ. They were trying to get us to go against the Sabbath. So it ain't nothing new. Trying to get us to go away from the Sabbath. They've been doing that. Go ahead. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form into two of the men, onto two of the men as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, mm -hmm. and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world. Now, th th these are instructions now. These are instructions that he uh, is given to people that he has taught. Go ahead. Go you into all the world uh -huh. and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. Now, in the beginning, he said, go only unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then he has Saul, who then comes, uh, uh, and he's appointed to go and teach the Euro Gentiles. So we see the word going to more than Israel. But when you get to these black Mormons who call themselves Israelites, they're going to tell you that the word can only go to Israel. That's why they have this 12 tribe chart that breaks up everybody they like into this 12 tri tribal breakdown. It's a bunch of mess. Go ahead. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized. Okay, okay. Instructions. He that believes and is baptized. See? There's, there's, see, people will tell you, all you got to do is believe. Well, if you believe, you'll be baptized. Go ahead. Shall be saved. Right. So, there is no salvation without uh, 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 being baptized. See, these are instructions. He has given them instructions. Go out. Preach. To, to the gospel to every creature. So you don't try to figure out, you know, are you Israel? Are you are you Gentile? Are you such and such? Can you hear? Well, I'm going to teach you. Can you read? Well, I'm going to teach you. Go ahead. But he that believeth not shall be damned. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. They got people walking around talking about, uh, repeat this. And you repeat this, you will say, that don't go according to what's written in here. It says if you believe and it is uh, 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 and are baptized. Wait a minute. This the Mashiach talking. This not some other man. This is Christ talking. And now this is our example explaining to us what must be done. How are we going to let uh, 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 people tell us something? other than that. Then you got to consider, you got an organization that's got 30 or 40 churches spread all across the country and none of them are baptized. How can they lead other people? Right. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, and let's start that at verse 1. <clears throat> verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Adonai, went on to the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound onto Jerusalem. Now, uh, Saul, yet breathing out uh, 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 threatenings, uh, this is the same one, of course, who they call uh, uh, Paul. Um, now, uh, he desired letters, basically warrants. The same stuff they kick your door in for now. 
If they have papers, they kick your door in and go in and do whatever. If he get a letter, that's authorization. That's all a warrant is. We got a warrant for arrest for such and such. So he sought out letters. You give me authorization. That means I can go in and I can go snatch these people out who are out here teaching in this, 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 this Christ thing. Go ahead. Verse 3. And, easy, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth you me? And he said, Who are you, Adonai? And the Adonai said, I am Yahshua, whom you persecuted. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. So do understand that Saul did not originally walk with the, uh, 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 the Mashiach. So this thing is, is, is happening. Understand, he had to deal with the children of Israel first. After Yahshua has dealt with the children of Israel, now he's opening the, the door to the uh, uh, Euro Gentiles, which fits the very things that are, are written in Romans uh, too, to the Gentile, to the to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. See, it, it fits. They're all on one accord. Go ahead. And he, trembling and astonished, said, "Adonai, what will you have me to do?" Right. Now he has been gone. This is what being born again is all about. Once your direction, no matter how long you've been in it, once your direction has been proven to be incorrect, how long are you going to fight to keep it? He got authority. He got letters to go and drag people out. Yet, as soon as this thing happened, hey, what will you have me to do? What are my instructions? Immediately. What are my instructions? He didn't go straight. Well, now he go. He didn't try to reason with him. He didn't try to try to prove his point. What do you have? What would you have me to do? What are my instructions? Go ahead. And the Adonai said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told you what you must do. And then you see Yahshua is doing things decent and in order, cause he could have told him, but he gonna send him to somebody else. Everything must be done decent and in order. So even as these things are happening, Yahweh is preparing other men to do other things so that they understand that he has been called. So you got these people who they call themselves, and then they call Yahweh and told them about it. But can't nobody verify they call him. See? Nobody can verify the calling. When you have Saul being called to do this, then you also have uh, Cephas being told, Peter, that he was going to be sent to the Gentiles. Understand, Peter was the rock on which the church was formed. So how can Yahweh and Yahshua set forth a direction and not tell the one that's in charge? So he's just not doing stuff. As he's preparing this person, he's also getting the other ones, so that they're all on one accord. Go ahead. Verse 7. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Right. So now he's being sanctified for them three days, cannot see, he has not eaten or drunk anything. He is now sanctified after this situation. Sanctification come in threes. Go ahead. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Adonai in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I'm here, Adonai. Right. And the Adonai said unto him, Arise. Now, this was a disciple. He understood what was going on. Go ahead. Arise. And go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Yehudas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold he prayeth, and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. That he might receive his sight. Now let's see what Ananias says. Then Ananias answered, Adonai, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. Right. He has a horrible reputation for the things that he has done. Go ahead. 
And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on your name. But the Adonai said unto him, Go your way. Dad, follow your instructions. But I don't like him. Follow your instruction. But he mean, follow your instruction. But you know, I could get locked up. Follow your instruction. He got a warrant for my arrest. Follow your instructions. Go ahead. Go your way. For he's a chosen vessel unto me. Wait a minute. Chosen vessel? He done throw people up in jail and got people crucified. He's a chosen vessel? Go ahead. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Uh-huh. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. I will show him uh, 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 how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now, he must bear my name before Gentiles first, kings, and the children of Israel. The children of Israel were scattered about, about through Europe and Asia. But he wasn't sent to the children of Israel. He's going to the Gentiles first. But he will deal with the children of Israel who are scattered amongst them. All right? That's something that we have to consider. But what we find here is, is uh, 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 this brother taking care of uh, 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 the things that need to be taken care of. Go ahead and finish that up. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him said... Brother Saul, the Adonai, even Yahshua, that appeared unto you in the way mm -hmm. as you cameth, has sent me, that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scaled, uh -huh. and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. As soon as he received his sight, he was baptized. Immediately. See, understand something. Saul has set people to be crucified. He has already done dirt. This baptism was necessary to begin this new walk. So you can't start that new walk with that, with, with, with that old dirt on your hand. So you have to consider all of these things where, where people are, are, are setting up congregations and they're going to teach people and they still have all the dirt of their old past, all the dirt of their old covenants, they still have all that dirt upon them, yet they're in charge of congregations and have never cleansed themselves. Remember, even when uh, uh, um, uh, the Mashiach did at uh, uh, Passover and he ended up washing the disciples' feet, he said, do you understand what I've done to you? As I have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. Uh, Peter said, no, 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 you ain't wash my feet. Because that, that just seems like, you know, no, you, a great man don't wash no other man's feet. No, no, you can't, you, can't, uh -uh, you can't wash my feet. You shall never wash my feet. See, if I, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. Okay, well, wash my head and my hands. Wash everything. No, 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 brother. All you need to do is to have me wash your feet. See, so that water takes its place even at the Passover. So you got people who have not been washed yet. They got con the congregations all across the country. Now, as much as Yahweh loved King David, he said David couldn't build his house. His hands were too bloody. David fought wars for Yahweh. It was enough for Yahweh that he said, I want to build you a house. You want to build me a house? That is so nice that you want to build me a house. I am taken that you want to build me a house, but you can't build me no house. But I am so, this is so nice that you want to build me, but you can't build me no house. Because I can't have no house built with those bloody hands. But, but, I'm going to make sure that it, that, that the real house come through your loins. I'm going to make sure that you be established forever just for wanting to build me a house. But you can't build me a house. Because David killed many people. Understand, it was King David that put Israel really together. That's a whole lot of war. So you can't turn around and build the holy house after shedding all this blood. 
Uh, Acts chapter 19, and let's read verses 13 through 16. But what we get out of that is Yahshua is the door. And the way to enter in through that door is this baptism. Saul, understand something. Without Saul, there is no New Testament. You understand how many of these books are his? Soon as he understood, he was baptized. He couldn't continue that, that work. Understand. Yeah, sure. Baptism. The work began. Yeah, he explained to some people some things at the temple at 12 years old. But not once did you hear, uh, 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 this is my son in whom I am uh, uh, well pleased. You didn't hear that until after baptism. You didn't hear that before. So there's certain things that people don't want you to understand in this book. Why? Because they can rule over you with rigor with, uh, uh, because of your ignorance of the situation. People need you to be ignorant so they can rule over you. There's certain jobs you'll go into that if certain people, they're not going to show you certain things. Why? Because they want to be able to rule over you. They don't want you to know certain things. Hey, man, where is the such and such? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. i get it for you. Yeah, you stay right there. Stay right there. No, nah, man, I want to know how to put it together so I can put it together myself. Stay right there, man. I'll get it for you. Why? They want to keep you ignorant. See? The more you know, the more of a threat you become. See? They don't want you to know. Acts chapter 19 and verse 13 through 16. Then certain of the vagabond Yehudis, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of y the Adonai Yahshua, saying, We adjure you by Yahshua whom Saul preaches. Right. So, now, these are vagabond Jews. Now, uh, 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 let's see what the Spirit says to them. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Yehudi, and chief of the priests, which did so. Chief of the priests. So, they, 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 got, they got some rank. They know some people. Right? Go ahead. And the evil spirit answered and said, Yahshua I know, and Saul I know. Well, who are you? Now, this is confusing to them. Wait a minute now. We, 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 we sons of the chief priest. What you mean you don't know us? The spirit says, Yahshua I know, and Saul I know. Why? Oh, them two were baptized. <laughs> Them two got baptized. I know them. Who are you? And people are always talking about, do you know the Lord? You don't either. <laughs> you ain't got no baptism. Who are you? The Spirit said, who are you? I know Yahshua. I know Saul. What do them two have in common? Right. Go ahead. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. That'll get your attention. That'll get your attention. You see a bro bunch of brothers running down the street butt naked? That'll get your attention. That'll get your attention. Right. Try to cast out some more spears then. Right. I bet you they ain't trying to cast out no more spears out of that. But see, they had no power with them spears. They weren't baptized. See, there's a lot of people, there's, there, there's a lot of people who in the word, and then there's those that are around the word. He says, I am the door. Without that baptism, you never entered into the door. So then you have all these people out on the internet who have been taught by people who are around the word. They ain't, they ain't got in it. They've been around the word for 20 years. That's just like somebody just come to the, come to the job and just walk around. They just look on the outside. You going in? Oh, no, I don't work there. I just walk around a lot on the outside. What? Why you come here? You just come to hang around the building? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You have people who are around the word. 20 plus years. Ain't never got in it. Because he is the door. Now, if they had never got in it, how they going to help somebody else? How you gonna help somebody you ain't helped yourself? 
You to teach that 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 a a a a, a man should not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? How can how you gonna help somebody else? Somebody drowning, man, I'm finna save them. Jump in there, I'm finna save their life. All right, brother, so you can swim? No. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't advise you jump in that water to try to save nobody. See, that happened down the street from me. Somebody was drowning in a little pond right over there on, on Panola Road. Brother Emotions got the best of them. They had called 911. 911, went, it wasn't happening fast enough. So brother's emotions took over. Yeah, get in here for the save this person. Yeah, they dragged two people out of the water. The one who was drowning first, and then the one who went to help the drowning victim. See, when you don't know what you're doing, you can't save nobody else. So of course, he tried to go in face first. A drowning victim is fighting the water and fighting everything, everything anything they grab solid. They pull on it to try to climb. So they tell you, you got to come from the back to save somebody. You can't come from the front. See, you don't know what you're doing. You can't save somebody until you learn how to save somebody. You don't just come up from the front to drown the victim. First thing he's going to do is grab you. And he's not trying to kill you. He's just trying to preserve himself. But in the process, he's going to kill you. Because he's going to climb you like a ladder. And every time you try to pull off to save him, he's pulling you down. And both of y'all going down. So these entire groups of non-baptized people, they're not doing any of the people any service, and they're not doing themselves any service. So be careful how you hear what you hear. That's all that we're going to do for today. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.